Print on demand versus Amazon FBA. I know this is going to be a tough one because a lot of you absolutely love print on demand and I do think it's great, but I wanted to show you the other opportunities that are out there like Amazon FBA. And this video is part of a much larger series of videos that I'm going to be bringing to you where I will be comparing, com uh, not companies, but business types with each other. So I also want to bring out affiliate marketing versus print on demand and then an affiliate marketing versus Amazon FBA and I want to just compare all these different types of businesses for you so you can make a proper decision which one will work best for you. Now before we get started as you know this is one of my YouTube videos so I need to ask you to subscribe because I believe 68% of people who watch these videos aren't actually subscribed so just go down there hit the subscribe button it can't get any easier than anything else in your life that you'll ever do just hit that subscribe button and Without further ado, let's get cracking on with the video. We've got Amazon FBA here on the left and Print On Demand here on the right. Throughout this video, I'm going to be scoring them based on each section we discuss. And I want you to know, regardless of which one wins at the end, that might not necessarily mean it's a better business for you. Every business is personable to the individual. So there might be a lot of you where Print On Demand is better for you. And there might be a lot of you where Amazon FBA is better for you. So hopefully after watching this video, you'll be able to decide be able to decide which category you're in. Let me just quickly do a brief 30 second overview of both businesses. Amazon FBA is very simple. It's where you go and you buy products in bulk from let's say Alibaba or China in America or the UK, wherever it may be. You get them sent to Amazon's warehouse. You list those products on Amazon and then Amazon will fulfill the orders. They will, you know, give you the organic traffic. They'll do everything to send that product to the customer and you'll get the sale. That's Amazon FBA. Print on demand is when you create designs on, you know, t-shirts, mugs, masks, bags, whatever they may be. You upload them to websites, let's say like Teespring, Redbubble, Merch by Amazon, any of these websites, there's so many of them. And either some of the websites will give free organic traffic like Redbubble and Amazon Merch. And then others, you have to do your own marketing either with Facebook ads, Instagram, and then basically what happens is that someone will go, they'll see your t-shirt or they'll see your mug, they'll buy it and you'll get, you know, the profit. They're kind of the same because they're both very offhand businesses. You don't actually have to physically touch any of the stock or anything like that. The biggest difference between the two businesses is that Amazon FBA, you've got to buy the stock in advance in bulk, which is quite a hefty, you know, price. Whereas with print on demand, you can list all the different items out without actually having to spend any money and you only pay pretty much when you get a sale, but then you're not actually paying because you're getting the profit. So those are the two businesses. Sorry if that was longer than 30 seconds. I think it was, but we're going to get straight into the first category and that is going to be the category of cost. So we're going to assume both companies are going to be run legitimately with limited companies here in the UK. I'm not talking about LLCs in America because I'm not I don't like talking about things that I'm not knowledgeable about and I never set up an LLC, so I don't wanna you know, give any wrong information. But setting up a limited company can be very cheap and very easy to do. You can do it yourself. For the last time I checked, it cost 12 pounds to do this. And again, it's literally going through and filling out like a form with check boxes and working your way through it and doing that. And if you don't want to do it, there are tons of online accountants that can do it for you. So that cost 12 pounds and that will be for both of them, print on demand, and Amazon FBA. They'll also both need business bank accounts. Again, I assume you want to do this properly and that should be free for the first year. I use Barclays and it was free for the first year and then it's six pounds a month from year two onwards. And again, both will have those costs. Now for Amazon FBA, there are, there is a, a monthly fee for actually having Amazon Seller Central, which is 25 pounds compared to, you know, if you use Redbubble or Merch by Amazon or Teespring, there is actually zero cost to use those platforms. But Amazon FBA, there is a cost to use the platform. Now, as I just said, Print On Demand doesn't have any fees in terms of platform fees, unless you want to start selling with Shopify, in which case it will be about $29, 29 I think, per month using Shopify. But I don't recommend you use Shopify unless, if you watched my pre previous video, you'll if, unless you're like a marketer and you're really good at marketing, other, other than that, I don't recommend actually using Shopify. Now, stock is a huge consideration here with Amazon, I would say you want around a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars for stock and not necessarily just stock, but also advertising at the beginning. Whereas with print on demand, you don't really need any of that kind of stuff. So this is a very, very, very large 
difference here of a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds to virtually nothing so that is a huge upfront cost where you need to decide whether or not you can afford that if you can't that's absolutely fine and that puts you straight away in the print on demand category but if you do have that money to start a business then that immediately puts you in the amazon fba category i know it costs a bit more to get started but there's way way more business you know scalability and business opportunity there so i'm actually going to give the win here to amazon however i'm not i'm going to give print on demand quite a good score because of just the very very small startup cost however you have to understand with print on demand if you don't want to spend money on advertising, you want to do it completely organically with Instagram traffic or, you know, Redbubble traffic, something like that, it could take you a very long time to actually start getting sales and to start building a business doing it like that. Now, just before going on to category two, I know if I said before, if you don't have a thousand pounds, that puts you in the category of print on demand. But hang on, I want you to wait and watch this entire video because it might change your mind whether or not Amazon is for you or print on demand is for you. So only make a decision once you've watched the entire video because I've got a few categories I'm discussing here and I think they are all so unbelievably important. So don't go off the video just because you think, oh, I know I don't have a thousand pounds to start Amazon FBA because there are many other factors involved here. Category two is how easy is this business? And I just want to quickly clarify, no business is easy and anyone who tells you that business is easy and making money is easy is lying to you to sell you a course. Now we actually have an Amazon FBA course and I never like to tell people, yeah, you know what, on the phone or whoever I'm trying to sell it, you know, it's easy, you can do it, anyone can do it. I'm just honest. I just like saying, no, it's not gonna be easy. You're creating a real business here that is hopefully going to make you a lot of money, okay? These things aren't easy, otherwise everyone would be doing it, which is absolutely fine. It doesn't have to be easy in order for you to want to do it or to be able to do it. You can still succeed with it. I just don't want you walking away from this video thinking, Print on demand is so easy. Amazon FBA is so easy. Oh, I can make money starting today and I'll be a millionaire tomorrow. These things don't exist. Okay, so I know I'm saying which business is easier right now, but I want you to understand that obviously both business, both businesses comes with its own complications. Now, Amazon FBA has a much longer turnaround time. I usually estimate between one and three months to actually get the business up and running, getting sales, you know, making a bit of money, making profit, and eventually making a serious income every single month. I would say three to five months to make that serious income. And then you can start expanding with more products and more products. Whereas print on demand, that is slightly different. With print on demand, the turnaround time can be a day, it can be a month, it can be a week. There is no saying because it takes, you know, finding that perfect niche, finding the perfect or creating the perfect design, listing it on the website. There's a lot of luck involved if you're just doing it organically. And if you are doing it organically, it can take a lot longer than three months, right? If you're using, using pay, paid ads, then it could be a week, it could be much quicker because as soon as the ads start running, you could start seeing sales, but then your profit margin, profit margins massively you know decrease there um so it's hard to say but what i would say is with amazon fba the reason it's i say around three months is because a good portion of that time a good solid month of that time is finding a product that you know has a lot more potential to succeed so that in three months time you're not necessarily gambling on whether or not you'll make sales it's pretty much well it's not 100 percent that you'll make sales but there's a lot of there's a much higher chance that you you will be making sales because of the amount of research that you did originally whereas with print on demand you could have fail design after fail design after fail design after fail design and there is just no telling how long it could possibly take now another factor when it comes to ease of business is how passive is it well at the beginning Amazon is not passive at all. And I know a lot of times I say I don't like the word passive and I don't like the word passive. I think every business needs some form of upkeep, but it's more passive than print on demand. And this is why with print on demand, you'll get you know a successful t-shirt and you'll get sales from it, but then you need to then do all the work over again to get another successful t-shirt. And you could see a lot of failures to do that. With Amazon FBA, it's slightly different because once you've done all that initial work and you have the product coming into Amazon, let's say every month you've got a thousand units coming in, you're going to be seeing sales happen every single month, regardless of what you do. The only real work that comes into it is to ramp up sales or to, you know, add another product to your line, something like that. But you could, if you really want, just leave it as a back burner, like I've done, right? I've kind of left my Amazon business for a bit and it's just getting sales on repeat now. But if I wanna, you know, make a bit more money with Amazon, release a few more products, then yes, it will take a bit more work. But I do think down the line, Amazon starts to get less and less 
time consuming, whereas print on demand that never really changes because you have to continuously create designs, continuously upload them, continuously try to innovate with new designs, that kind of thing. So for this category, I'm going to give the win to Amazon only because I genuinely think, yes, it takes longer to start up and the beginning it's much, much, much harder to actually start up, but in the long term, I'm thinking, you know, a year down the line, because you've got a you've got a forecast for like a year to three years to five years, thinking down the line, Amazon becomes a lot easier than print on demand. Category number three is marketing. And this is quite an easy one because Amazon will hands down win the marketing game. They get hundreds of millions of people, you know, on Amazon with organic search. So if you find the right product and you, you know, you have the right keywords in place then there is absolutely no way that any print on demand website will get more traffic than Amazon. So if you put the right product on Amazon, you'll get tons of organic traffic. Whereas if you launch a product on Redbubble or Etsy, you know, or Teespring or even Merch by Amazon, it's not going to see as much organic traffic as actually launching a product on Amazon's actual, you know, site that everyone goes and shops at. So I do think Amazon wins the marketing side hands down. And category number four is lifespan. How long is the lifespan of these businesses? So with print on demand, you could have a product or t-shirt, I should say, or maybe even a mug, whatever the product is, the lifespan might not be very long because you could have a design that's really hot and trendy and get you sales for, you know, a couple of weeks or even a couple of months, but there's no reason why that t-shirt should get you sales for years to come, right? I can't actually think of any t-shirt that stayed in fashion or in, in season for very long even these huge companies you know like abercrombie and, and and all these expensive companies gucci and all these kind of things they bring out fall seasons and summer seasons and they bring out new designs every you know six months so there's no reason why it can't be it, it shouldn't be the same for print on demand for print on demand right you bring out a cool wacky t-shirt why would it be getting sales three or four years down the line or even a year down the line so in terms of lifespan for print on demand it's you know it could be six months it could be a year but i don't think it's very long However, lifespan with our Amazon is far longer. If you pick the right product, and I mean a need product that doesn't go out of fashion, it's not like a, a want, it's not like an iPhone case, which you know will last until the next iPhone comes out, and it's not like a, a, a seasonal product like Christmassy or Father's Day, -y, and it's not a trendy product. If you just go for a generic need product, right, whatever it could be, you know, let's say resistant bands, I know that's not a need product, but that's something that people will be buying forever and ever. And to give you a great example of this, our product, which is in the sport, sports and outdoor, which is it's in the health um, category, right? That we've been selling for over five years now and nothing has really changed because it's a need product. You need it if you get injured and like the technology is not changing. They're not getting any better. They're not getting any worse. It's kind of just staying the same and we're just getting sales, right? So if you find that right product, the lifespan of an Amazon FBA business can be ages i mean we're on five years now and i don't see why it won't be alive in another five years another 10 years another 20 years right so the lifespan for an amazon business is far far longer which makes me feel like the initial work put in is so much more worthwhile because you get so much more out of it right let's discuss the verdict here now i feel like you know where i'm going with this personally i think amazon fba is the better choice if you are able to make that choice if you are not able to do print um if you're not able to do amazon fba because you don't have the money to start i would say earn some money you know doing something else and i've actually got a video coming out on how you can earn a couple of hundred dollars or pounds to get started in a bigger business so what i would say is earn that money and then as soon as you can go into a business like amazon fba now there's 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 no doubt that print on demand does work for some people and there are plenty of people making millions and millions out there print on demand and print on demand could work for you. It could be your choice. And I would say do a business that you will get the most enjoyment out of and the money will come eventually. For a lot of people, this is very difficult because they're relying on money to actually live and survive. But I would say if you genuinely, genuinely love print on demand and you just love making the designs and if you make money, you make money. And if you make lots of money, then you make lots of money, but you just love making designs and posting designs and creating new cool designs. I've said designs too many times, then stick with print on demand because just do what you're passionate about. But I have to say on paper, which business makes more sense for the longevity and for the just the, all, everything stacked up against each other. 
Amazon FBA makes a lot more sense if you've got that initial thousand pounds. And I always say start with at least fifteen hundred pounds or fifteen hundred dollars. Use that initial five hundred dollars to buy a course of some sort of training because I do think it helps. Look, not everyone needs it, but I do really, really believe that it can help if you get the right mentoring. And then I would say that if you've got that ability to go into with that money, go into Amazon FBA. But if you've got nothing then I would say, you know, print on demand is a way to go. It could take a very long time, but try and, you know, do some form of business, like maybe just do some hustle side jobs to get a bit of money to start Amazon FBA. Again, you have to realize this is my opinion. I prefer Amazon FBA to print on demand. I will continue to make print on demand content for you because I know so many of you love print on demand. I do want to help you with that business, but I'm going to start bringing out content in other areas like affiliate marketing, which I think is huge, like YouTube, which again is huge. Amazon FBA is huge. So I do want to start educating everyone in other areas of business, not just print on demand, but I will still be doing the print on demand content. So if you want to start seeing broader things on this channel, then definitely hit that subscribe button because there is so much opportunity out there and I want to just help you in whatever it is. Okay. I really hope you like this video and I would love to hear your thoughts on it. So let me know in the comments down below about these two businesses, you know, Amazon FBA, print on demand, which one do you think is better? Which one would you ideally do if you could do either? I think that's really, really important to understand. If you could choose money wasn't an option, which one would you do? And that's your answer. That's the one you should aim to do and then try and figure out where to get that money from. And there are so many ways to actually get money. So I don't want to drone on with this video because I feel like I'm droning on a bit, but I hope that was a good comparison for you. I hope you really understood the differences between Amazon FBA and print on demand. They, they both got good scores. Okay. They both got great scores and they're both great businesses. But depending on your situation, that's how you can determine which one works for you. So it's, a lot of it is about the money. A lot of it is about what you're passionate about. And once you've got those two answers, then you can, you know, come up with a really good decision which business you want to go into. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video where it might be affiliate marketing, it might be print on demand. Who knows? Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see. Thank you so much for watching.